UN climate change talks in Paris. Now, while there's broad agreement on the need to reduce the use of fossil fuels, there's more disagreement than the average shadow cabinet meeting about how best to meet carbon reduction targets. One man who thinks we're all getting too hot under the collar about climate change is scientist, long-term weather forecast, and brother of Jeremy, Piers Corbyn, who thinks all this talk about CO2 and increasing world temperatures is a myth. Here's his take of the week. Despite the hype in Paris, the fact is there's no such thing as man-made climate change. Yeah, the truth is the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change of the United Nations is a political, not a scientific body, and it even amends scientific documents before publication to conform to diplomatic niceties. The climate alarmism plastered in the media and the so-called science put forward by the United Nations is fraudulent. And what Sir David Attenborough says is a disgrace to science. And we challenge him to open debate. And one thing we would ask him is, just look at this graph. The upper curve is what their UN models predict. And you can see they fail and fail and fail again to show what really is happening in the world. The world now is cooling and our own scientific examination of soul activity shows it will cool even more rapidly in the next 20 years. When it comes to CO2 emissions, they're failing on their own terms. They're actually not cutting them, but exporting them. They closed the British steel industry to reduce CO2 in Britain, and it's regrown in India to make more CO2. This is absurd. We've lost jobs. So, let's be clear, the climate change energy charges on your electricity bill are actually a poll tax on the poor, which even causes people to die in winter when they cannot cook the bill. So why is it happening? Follow the money. Huge profits have been made from carbon trading, from expensive climate change, grandiose projects, Big oil benefits from price rises. Banks benefit from any trading. You do not. Ice cream, tea, coffee, French baguette. We got it all here. Now is the time to start full debate in Britain on the future of the climate change story. It's a con and must be closed down. That's all for today. And from the Piccadilly Whip ice cream stall in Tar Hill to the politically whipped here in Westminster. Piers Corbyn, welcome to the programme. Now, surely, surely for you to be right, nearly all the world's leaders, from the President of America to the President of China, plus most of the world's climate scientists, are engaged in a, a massive conspiracy to, conspiracy well, to hoodwink us. That can't be right. Uh, well, of course, most... Uh, of the climate scientists you say, but that isn't true. Uh, of this so-called survey of climate scientists of 12,000 papers, only 0.3% of them actually stated that they, uh, from their work, that CO2 had, man CO2 had been the cause of warming. The other papers said nothing at all, including papers... But most myself. of the world has signed on to this. Most of all the leaders have their own scientific advisors. They're Although they argue, but no, what they're to do. appointed. You see, it's the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. They appoint people to advise themselves. The uh, IPCC is a political organisation, so not a scientific why organisation. Why could so many people be hoodwinked, and why? Well, it's easily done, and it has been done before. There's many things in the past which have been untrue and believed, such as you know, Galileo had a problem bringing forward the truth. John Harrison had a problem bringing forward the truth for 30 years about how to measure latitude. For 10 years, people didn't believe that, or believe that continental drift was impossible because of the entrenched interest groups. And 
if you want to know what is actually going on, we can tell you. But that graph I showed shows that the theory they put forward is not working. So under the Climate Change Act, Section 6, um, Part 2, it states very clearly that if the science changes, i.e. information changes, then the measures have to change and should be discussed. Now what what's saying is we have to reopen the debate on climate change and actually not impose these charges which are closing the dispute. But you said, you claimed in, in your, your take there that the world is now cooling. Yes. But that's not borne out by either the land or the satellite temperature measurement, it is, is it? It is. Not, not, not graph, up to now. Look at the graph again. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. For the past, uh, I mean, no, temperatures no, now, the the temperatures now, shows that. temperatures now are on average about 0.5 degrees above where they were 35 uh, years yeah. ago. The, the people argue about no, no. a pause. There's but not 0.5 degrees of fraud, and you can find that on the website. But that's, a, but that's the, all the satellite measurements I know show no, no. that the temperature's been right now. There's an argument about all the satellite measurements. No. So-called land measurements show, show an increase, but they are fraudulently chosen because they change the data sets on the way through. And you can go on the weatheraction.com website and see this, or many but other But we've sites. had since, I mean, people argue about a pause, whether that's there, or how long it will mm -hmm. last. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But a since, pause, since okay. 1997-98, we've had some of the warmest years on record. Oh, we've had some very warm years, yes. So how but can it be called? The average, be called average in the last... Uh, the, uh, the, peak, the recent peak is the same as, taking away the data fraud, the same as the peak in the late 90, in the 1940s. Michael, you're a bit of a sceptic, I think, on a global warming, but would you go as far as, as Piers? Well, I, I'm not scientifically qualified which Piers is, but what has made me very suspicious is that I do feel there's been a sort of bandwagon around all of this. Uh, I've, I've, I'm so pleased to hear Piers on the BBC because at one point the BBC said that the debate was settled and they didn't want to hear anything more from climate sceptics. But even if one did accept that uh, there was global warming and that it was man-made, the assumption is that the way to tackle this is by massive human self-sacrifice in the developed countries. And I think Piers makes a very good point that what that does actually is to export jobs and to export the possibility of creating carbon dioxide to other countries. But in any case, it seems to me that the first thing you would ask yourself is what is the cost of dealing with climate change? I mean, climate change has occurred frequently in the past and human beings have had to adapt it. So assuming that we might adapt it in the future rather than trying to prevent it, and I think there's a huge loss of humility in believing that we can prevent it, you know, what would be the cost of that? What would be the consequences? And I don't think we've ever had that rational debate. Well, that's what the Stern report was about. But I, that, that I did the cost. Uh, I think people... I mean, you can argue with it, but that's what it did. I think people have got themselves into... But it's a laughing stock around the world, the Stern report. I think people have got themselves into a frame of mind that, you know, human beings are basically sort of evil, that there's a... That, there's a, that, that we are overindulging ourselves, that what we need to do is restrain ourselves, that globalisation is the consequence of it, uh, is the cause of this, that capitalism is somehow involved in this. I, I, you know, I, I think the whole thing lends itself to hysteria. Alan, what's your take on this? Well, I, I would that it was, were true. I mean, if Pierce was absolutely right, then there is no global warming, and uh, there shouldn't be the... the but, Pierce, I'm not, like Michael, I'm not... Qualified well, scientifically, but no, well, well, you, I, you I agree look, we should open the debate. I under, under the this afternoon, under at the site, I went to the House of Commons Library and asked them. Ninety-seven percent of climate scientists say that climate change is real, okay. that it's and happening, that figure, and that it's man, it's and that it's man. Okay. Well, you have to argue with the House of Commons Library. That's but also irrelevant. Right. But here's the question. Irrelevant. Here's the question. Evidence it's not, is what it's not, not a play upon your name, as I understand it. It's peer review that mm -hmm. looks at these different. Okay. scientific uh, yeah. papers. Who's peer-reviewed your uh, assessment? I've had many peer-reviewed papers and the... Uh, on, success, this subject. on this well, subject? On, on the question of, of... No, what I quote is peer-reviewed papers. On the question of, of uh, the accuracy of weather action forecasts, so we have a peer-reviewed success rate, so, which, uh, which is based on our forecast are based on are, solar activity. I've got really peer reviewed papers well, on, then, on your um, position is, yes. Your well, position is at the extreme end, though, of scepticism. I mean, it's, it's really denial, it's not just sceptic. There are even climate scientists who, who can disagree about the exact temperature oh, yeah. consequences of CO2. Uh, the, the, uh, so uh, the, 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 the warmest position. On, 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 right, but that's not yours. You're, 
effectively in outright denial. Well, we're saying that the CO2 has no effect whatsoever, and that is borne out by history. If you look at history, CO2 levels follow changes in temperature, not the other way around. And that is because the temperature of the sea controls the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. Because uh, okay. the sea itself has got 50 times more CO2 in it than the atmosphere. So the sea surface temperature controls how much goes in and out. Why have you not managed to convince your brother? Well, I think the situation in the Labour Party is that Jeremy has to follow Labour policy. And the Labour policy <laughs> includes support for climate change. Act. But he, he, he dines out, he dines out on his well, climate no, change no, 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 credentials. No, no. Within, which, within which the Climate Change Act, it makes very clear, as the science changes, then the measures should change, which means now is the time for debate. Now,